that's why you shouldn't ploop more than five times in a row. Man, those time cheaters are fast. I'm gonna need to recalculate this thing. Wait a second. Where am I? Ah, oh, there's... somebody. Oh. Should I talk to the crying scarecrow or not? Eh, it's not really my problem. I don't mean to intrude, but what is this place? This whole land used to be miles and miles of pumpkin patch, and it was my job to care for them. I'd plant them, raise them, watch them grow, and when they was ready, I'd turn them into jack-o'-lanterns. Oh, they were my best friends. But now they're gone. They're eaten alive by those darn time gophers. <gasps> time gophers. <laughs> oh, Jack. I don't even have anything to remember you by. I, I may actually know someone who can help with that. Really? Well, well, what do I have to do? Just, just tell me. Just take my hand. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's full of color, but in a spooky way. Plus, it gives way to the holiday season. What's not to love? If you love what? fall that much, then you're gonna love this guy! Ah! Ah! Whoops. Hold on a second. Well, here we go again. Aha! That's more like it! <laughs> you, you know, it's kinda funny. I said take my hand, but it seems that I took yours. Ha! <laughs> if I had insides, they would be feeling odd right about now. Anywho, Scarecrow, this is me. Hi. Me, this is the Scarecrow. Wait, hold on. He needs our help because, well, he's lost his pumpkins. Oh, no. My pumpkins. My jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> Oh no. Now, we're not looking to replace the pumpkin. They're irreplaceable. What he said. I was just hoping that maybe you could make him a replica. You know, something to remember them by. Maybe you could make it out of something that won't rot away or be eaten by time gophers. Maybe something firm, but soft and somewhat flexible. Something you could stand on if need be. Are you talking about EVA foam? Now you're getting it. Yeah, thought so. Uh, 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 um. Yeah, what? May I ask a question, please? What? What is it? Well, uh, why do you two look so similar? I'm him from the future. It's time travel logic. Don't think about it too much. Oh. So anyway, you up to the task? Yeah, I guess. 
Good, then I'll leave him with you and I'll be off. Whoa, whoa, wait, you're... You're, you're leaving him with me? Yeah, why? Well, what do you want me to do with him? I've never really taken care of a morning scarecrow before. Oh, gee, I don't know. Keep him occupied. Show him around, teach him your process. If all else fails, you can have Skelly babysit. They're both spooky people, they should get along fine. <laughs> you obviously do not remember how antisocial Skell- what the heck? What? Skelly! My old friend, it's you! Oh, it does me good to see a familiar face. Huh. Well, what do you know? Skelly knows the Scarecrow. How? Search me. After I escaped the mad scientist, I tried to find Skelly old boy, but never could. I guess he found his own way out and made a few friends along the way. Yeah, well, good for him, I suppose. Well said. And with that, my work here is done. For now, at least. See ya. Okay then. Greetings, I'm Emmett, and today I'm going to be making... Stand back a little bit. A little more. Okay, maybe that's all I can... Just, just stay there. Anyway, today I'm going to be making a replica jack-o'-lantern out of EVA foam. And I'm going to be making it for a newly acquired Scarecrow friend. Hmm? Oh, that's me! Yes. Yes, it is. Hello! You know what? Let's do this a little differently. Over the rain. <clears throat> okay, so, what uh, size slash shape do you want your pumpkin to be? <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I suppose I'd want it about the shape of the, the headless horseman's noggin. What? So, you're you're saying you want it to look like a pumpkin, then? Oh, no, I, I'd be talking about his head before he was headless. Really? Hmm. Huh. Yes, you see, it was of a highly peculiar shape. Very wide. I believe that's why he now uses pumpkins as replacements. They look so similar. For a while, he used to just stick his old head back on top of his body. But then it started to decay into a skull, and well, after a while, he just got tired of freaking people out. So he replaced it with a jack-o'-lantern. Where I come from, jack-o'-lanterns are charming. Well, that makes sense. Anyway, I'm, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna blow up this balloon. And then I'm gonna cover it in duct tape to get a pattern. To make it easier for the people. To make it. To make it easier for the people at home, I'm gonna skim over this part with editing. But, uh, just. The. Don't touch that. Just say when. When? Well, that may be just, just a little bit too big. Can you let a little out? A little smaller. Mm, smaller still. Whoa, 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 that's too much. Go back. There. That's that about do it. Okay. All right, so. Whoa, no. Well, now that I look at it, it seems a little too large. Well, I've already tied it. Oh. Okay. Does it... I don't know, does it matter that much? Well, I was hoping for something that would look a more like my old jack-o'-lanterns. Okay, fine. I can... 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna mess with this. I can just alter the pattern. Uh, make it a little smaller. Let's see if we can squish this down a little bit. Mm. What? Ah! What? What was that? Well, I guess now we can change the size. Okay, that is a duct tape pumpkin. I tried to squish the top down a little more than that, but it didn't really stick. Hopefully that won't be a problem later on, because I mean, you've, there's oblong pumpkins, right? Oh yes, we've got pumpkins of all shapes and sizes. Good. Wow, once I knew a pumpkin got stuck in a wire fence and squished around the middle. It gave him this little lump of a head and a body that oozed out from below. Mm-hmm. And I had the little fence wrapped around the middle. I even named him Blobby. It spelled like the name Bobby, but with an L. I named him that because he looks sort of like a blob. Well, actually it looks like two blobs stuck together. One of them's a little bit larger than the other one. He was somewhat silly looking, but he didn't think of himself as deformed. He was just so happy all the time. Like a little ray of sunshine. Oh, he was the gosh darn cutest thing you ever did see. Before he died. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Good for you. Now, I need something to... Ah, here it is. Now, I'm hoping that this is not going to pop. I mean, it shouldn't pop because there's duct tape on it, but I didn't want to waste a lot of duct tape, so there's not a very thick layer. I'm hoping for the best that it will retain some of its shape and I'll be able to retrieve these patterns later on, but I'm preparing for the worst that it just... Well, the knife is in there. I don't know if that just went... Huh. I wonder if I could peel off the duct tape from the balloon. I didn't even think about that. Eh, I don't want to risk this going off when I'm not prepared for it. Ah, there's the release of air. Okay, then. Oh no, it's a rotten pumpkin! <laughs> Sorry. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of what I was afraid of. It's just wrinkling up. Huh? Oh wait. The balloon is cracking open, so... Hopefully I can stretch it out just by poking at bubbles. That seems to be working. May take a while though. Okay, so, took me a little bit. I got all these little patterny thingies cut off from the balloon pumpkin. I should definitely do this differently. I thought it would work just to stick it straight to the balloon. Probably should have put something between because I had to cut and peel off a lot of the balloon in order to flatten this out. So, that's that. But I was able to flatten them out and get them traced onto foam. Tomorrow I'm probably going to... Scarecrow? Hey. <coughs> what was that? Oh, oh, sorry. I I must have slipped into watch mode there for a second. It's what you humans would call uh, dozing off. Yeah, it is getting pretty late. You know what? Let's call it a night. You can you can bunk up with Skelly here, and we can start the fabrication process tomorrow. Oh, 
Oh, well, that, that sounds agreeable to me. Well, good. All right. Okay. See you in the morning. Well, Skelly, looks like we're roomies once again. <laughs> good night. So first thing, I went out to the shop and ground off the texture that's on the back of the foam. Cause that's something you need to remember to do. Sometimes the texture works, most of the time you want to sand it off somehow. How? What? Oh well I use a grinder cause that's what I have. Uh, most people use like a belt sander. You don't want anything too aggressive cause it could tear up the foam. Just something to smooth off the texture. Uh, okay, next step, I'm going to take a knife and cut out... Come here. And I'm going to cut out all of these patterns. <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> oh, I, well, I, I was I was looking at that thing and, and I was messing around, I suppose, and one thing led to another. Don't just mess around with this thing. It's a knife. You need to be careful. Do you... Are, are you okay, at least? Oh, I'm all right. This type of thing happens more than you might think. I can just root it back in there, if you know what I mean. Oh, oh, yeah. See, there we go. Good as new. Well, good. Now let's get to more purposeful cutting. Okay, that is a bunch of leaves. Oh, very nice. So, so tell me, what kind of adhesives do you prefer? Well, I like the enthusiasm, but don't get ahead of yourself. First things first, we gotta warm these puppies up with a heat gun and put a little curve into them. Doing this will help them stick together, you see, because they'll already have a sort of pumpkin-like curve to them. That is how we do that. Oh, well that looks like it's starting to take form. So, so do we glue it together now? You're still moving a little fast there, friend. The next thing I'm gonna do is take the Dremel here and go over these edges. I didn't really cut the edges as straight as I could have. Plus it kind of wrinkled up a little bit where I bent it. So I'm hoping that I can smooth that over with the Dremel and make it a little more flat so they can glue together. I'm also going to bevel this edge a little bit to try and emphasize the lumpiness of the pumpkin. Otherwise, it might be a little too flat here, or there might be a visible ridge where they glued together. So, that all needs to be smoothed over. Oh, well very well then, continue. So you want it to go from something like this, to something like that. Is it ready? Yeah. Well, okay then. Let me get off your table. <laughs> oh! Okay. So, this is what I'm going to be using to glue these together. 
Well, what's that? It's contact cement. Ooh. How it works is you paint it onto both sides that you're going to be sticking together. And then you let it dry for a few minutes. If you time it right, they should stick together pretty quickly and pretty permanently. The downside is, it's very chemical-y. And it's not really good to breathe in, which is why I have the fan going, and which is why I'm going to be wearing a mask. And you should probably wear a mask as well. Well, uh, uh, aren't I already wearing a mask? I'm pretty sure that's just your face. The mask is my face. Oh. Oh, oh. Uh, I, I think I, I may just, just have something yet. Where is it? Where's that darn pesky thing? So much straw in here. Ah, mm. 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 fingers. Can't tie nothing no more. Come on. Can't feel the thing. There. I'm not sure if that's really... Nah, never mind. Some trivia about this contact cement. The last project I did, I put it in this bottle here, but I made the mistake of assuming that this was airtight and I left it on the shelf. When last I saw it, it was about that full. After a couple weeks, it was this full. The bottle was squished in on itself and the stuff at the bottom here was rock hard. So I'm hoping that I can use it out of this can and then seal it up again and that'll be airtight enough for it not to solidify. I'm hoping. I don't know what the conventional storing method is, but if it's like this on the shelf, I assume that it should be safe. Okay. Well, I can't really smell it, so I guess that means that the, my prevention systems are working. Because normally this stuff is really stinky. You know, the thought has just occurred to me that I do not have lungs. So I put on a couple layers of the contact cement. When it stops looking liquidy, I'll probably go ahead and stick them together. So, uh... uh how, how, how long do we have to wait for these thingies? I think it varies depending on the size of the surface area and the amount that you put on. The, like, canisters say, like, 10 minutes. I've heard from people who actually work with it, five minutes. Kinda seems like these are taking even less than that. So somewhere in there. Oh, if you work with it a few times, you'll get an idea of the timing. So I glued the eighths into fourths and then the fourths into these two hemispheres here. And the weird thing is, it ended up even narrower than I was expecting. Well, is there any way of making it wider? Well, is there anything wrong with a skinny pumpkin? I mean, you, you... You said you saw all kinds. True, I did say that, and I am a scarecrow of my word. But, well, you see, all the pumpkins that I really knew were body positive. It makes them charming. Can I ever tell you the tale of Blobby the Blobby Pumpkin? He got stuck in a wire fence. Y yes. Oh. You mentioned that. Oh, oh I did? Oh, well you know the story then. Continue. Theoretically, I was thinking that if this peaked up like that, that I should be able to invert it. 
sort of like that and squish it together, but that doesn't seem like it really wants to work. One thing I could do is heat it up again and relax these curves. Maybe that'll help it stretch out a little more. And at some point I'll need to cut out a hole in the top and bottom for the stem, so I could probably go ahead and round off these corners a little bit to help it fit together. If all else fails, I still have the patterns that I used to make the sections, so I could just cut out an extra one or two and glue it in there. Okay, so I think if I just add one more rib to this thing, then it should fit together. That just means I need to do the whole process over again one more time. Here we go. So I made the extra ridge, glued it onto one half, then I stuck them together. This was pretty tricky, especially the second part, because I couldn't really get a good grip on the foam to work it into the right position. I just had to shove it together and hope that it stuck. But I was able to make it work. And now, I have a pumpkin. Oh, it's a cute little fella, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. So, uh, what's the next step here? Is it, is it uh, painting time? Not quite. First, there's some detailing I want to do. During the break, I noticed that there were a couple of places, mostly on this last seam that I didn't quite stick together right, where the foam wasn't lined up and it made sort of a ridge. So I took the Dremel with one of those rounded stone bits and smooth that out. Now I am going to add the stems. For the bottom stem I'm just going to cut a toilet paper tube into ribbons and wrap them all together and stick it in there. For the top stem I was trying to think of something that could bend a little bit and would still have that corded look of real pumpkin stems. The first thing that came to my mind was to twist together a bunch of pipe cleaners and burn the fuzzies off, but that would take a lot of pipe cleaners. And for some reason, the first idea to come to me was to bind up a bunch of yarn and wrap it in tape. So now I have all these little mini stems that I'm going to glue together to make the big stem. After making the bottom stem, I cut a hole where it needed to go and super glued it in place. Then I used what was left of the toilet paper tube to make the base of the top stem, onto which I glued the mini stems. After that, I super glued and hot glued them into place as well. And now it has a stem on both ends. 
It also has a rattle because I dropped the cutouts inside. We can fish those out later. So what's next? Now I'm going to score it. Scoring? Oh, whoa, whoa. I mean, it looks so good so far. Uh, I, th I think I'll give it an A. Yeah, <laughs> not that kind of score. I'm going to take the X-Acto knife and make little scratches going down all of the sections to try and add more of that kind of wrinkled, divided texture that pumpkins have. So after I scored it, I hit it with the heat gun and that opened up a lot of the marks. Ooh, that's very exciting. And now it's time to cut it open. Ooh, ooh, well, I'll have to get up for this. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Well, it's empty! Well, it is made out of foam. Oh, that's right. Foam pumpkins don't have insides. Silly me. One quick note about how I cut this. I tried to hold the knife at an angle so that the walls are slanted and it can rest on top without falling inside. No, well, ain't that clever of you. Why, thank you. Okay. Scarecrow, do you know what time it is? Huh? Oh, well, well let me take a look see then. Uh, looking out that window, it appears that the sun is just starting to kiss the horizon. So, I'd say maybe it's a little after, oh, uh, I don't know. The question was rhetorical. What? Sorry, I... Guess I didn't make that clear. Oh, the answer was, I thought rhetorical questions didn't have answers. Well, my point was you didn't need to take it that literally. Well, I always thought if a fella poses you a question, then the, 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 the proper thing to do would be to give him an honest answer. Isn't that right? Ah. Uh, the answer was, it's time to give him a face. Oh, oh, it's that time already? Oh, well, if that don't put me all a quiver. Let's start with the eyes. Triangle or circle? Well, so you see, start by drawing two circles, but then I want you to put a sort of slanted line going over the top of them. Okay, so, uh, so something, something like that? No, 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 don't make them look angry. Put the line on the other side of the eye. Make him look happy, but just a touch concerned. Happy? Pish posh, it's a jack-o'-lantern. It's not supposed to be happy, it's supposed to be spooky. Why would it need to be happy? And Why the heck did I just say pish posh? Well, all the pumpkins I knew were happy. One happy pumpkin coming up. Oh, hallelujah. What did you just say? Oh, well, well, uh, you see, I always have had trouble saying the word, uh, hell, 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 well, one happy Voldemort pumpkin coming right up. What about the mouth? Well, start with a crooked smile of a friendly sort. And then, have his, his bottom lip sort of jut out to the side. Hmm? Just sort of like, like a... What? Well, like, like a kind of... Like, well, well I, I can't express it with my cloth features, but uh, you... Here, you try it. Come on, stick out your lip. Now, now, to the side. Now give us a good old smile. 
Ooh, there, yeah, something like that. Oh. So you want him to look kind of dumb? Well, I'd say it looks charming. Eh, you're a pumpkin. So, want to give him any teeth? Well, give him the usual jagged look. But then imagine that all his teeth were gummed out, making him look sort of like an odd combination of an old man and a baby. Well, one happy Voldemort Benjamin Button pumpkin coming right up. I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and draw his teeth on like normal, because I'm pretty sure I can shrivel them up after I cut them out. Well, you seem to know what you're doing. Ooh, maybe, maybe give him a little buck tooth. That'd look cute. Okay. Oh, that looks kind of silly. Oh, well, I think it's charming. So, do you just think everything's charming? Well, anything charming, that is. Eh, that makes sense. Ooh, well, I'd say that'd be looking mighty fine. So what's next? Well, there are some pre-painting details I want to add. These final details include trimming down the edges around the eyes and mouth, and then cleaning up said edges with the Dremel. Then I put probably too many scratches around the eyes. All of this was to try and make it look a little more withered. I thought scratches would help with that. Just make it look like it was starting to fall apart. And it... eh. It doesn't do any harm, it just doesn't exactly look natural. But it'll provide a place for me to add some dirt and weathering once I get to the painting stage. Finally, I hit it one last time with the heat gun. When it was soft, I warped the openings and squished it a bit so that it would have more of those older, withered pumpkin qualities. After that... I'm gonna take him out to the shop and spray him with Plastidip. And then it's time to paint. Ooh, I can't wait! Rise and shine! What? Oh, morning! You know, after spending a few nights on watch with Skelly Old Boy right here, I must say, he stands around just as skillfully as I remembers him. Don't you, Skelly? <laughs> yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, so, uh, so Skelly, you uh, you think you're getting to know the Scarecrow a little bit? Well, good. Seeing as though you're such great friends, I may need you to k take charge of him for a little bit, cause I I kind of need to focus with this this next stage. Plus, if I get the pumpkin done. While he's distracted, then it'll be a nice little surprise for him. Think you could do that? Okay, good. Thanks. You're a pal. What are but you whispering about? Oh, oh, was I intruding? Well, I, I, I'm sorry. Well, it's your move. What? Who, me? Follow you? Well, if you say so. Okay. All right, so I gave the pumpkin a couple of coats of Plasti Dip. This seals the foam and makes it easier to paint. Think of it as a rubber-based primer, basically. I could have done the same basic thing with Mod Podge, and I am going to use it for this pumpkin. But what I have in mind isn't exactly a full covering, and I'll show you what I mean right now. If I cover it in Mod Podge and purposely try to leave a lot of brush strokes going down the pumpkin, the brush strokes actually end up looking sort of like a pumpkin skin. Just sand it down a little and you've got a pretty good looking pumpkin. 
So you know when I said that I didn't think the Mod Podge was going to be an actual covering? Well, I said that because I thought I would be able to put the brush strokes onto the pumpkin without actually, like, giving it a full layer. I don't know what I was thinking. In order to put the brush strokes on, you, you have to paint it on there. So I basically just gave it a couple of good coats of Mod Podge, which means I didn't actually need the plasti dip, but it doesn't really do any harm, it's just an extra durable first layer now. And as if that wasn't enough, I'm actually going to spray it with some more plasti dip. Why? Well, because pumpkins not only have these, these kind of liney wrinkles, they also have some bumpity bumps. At least I think they do, it's been a while since I've handled a real pumpkin. But regardless, my plan is to kind of spatter it with the Plasti Dip, instead of applying a full coat, I have a can that's pretty much empty. It can't spray evenly, it just kind of goes Production value! Huh. So I'm hoping that that will add that sort of lumpy texture that I'm looking for. So does he act this silly in every video? What? He does. Oh my, it's like he's trying to come out of his shell or something. I shall. <laughs> so let me see if I got this straight. He'll make these little videos, and then he'll load them onto the this YouTube thingamabob. That how that works? Oh, well, I guess you'll learn something new every day, don't you? Whoa, 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 wait, I cotton picking minute. Are you trying to tell me the internet is real? It's not just a legend exaggerated down the generations? Well, I'll be darned. This befuddles me more than I've ever been befuddled. I can't believe it's real! Just wait until I tell my pumpkins about... My pumpkins. My jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> oh no. So now that the pumpkin's all ready, it's time to take it outside and spray paint it orange. Well, Skelly, I suppose my problems really started at the beginning. Now? The day the old farmer decided to stuff some straw down his late father's trousers. That was the day I was born. That was me. Now you see, most scarecrows move out of the farmer's pants by the time they're 20 or so. Not me. Oh, I was nearly 40 by the time I got up the courage to find pants of my own. Oh, those old trousers were falling to pieces by the time I left. You could see straw peeking out of holes everywhere. It was disgraceful. <laughs> What? Scary. Oh, oh, right. Of, of course, doctor. Patient confidentiality. I, I'll, I'll, I'll just go. Well, anyway, let me tell you about my childhood for a moment. Okay. It was hard sometimes watching the other young scarecrow my age frolic around in the fields while I was busy working. So. And I won't pretend I wasn't jealous a time or two. I. But I can't complain either. It now. made me who I am. Now let me tell you about my first date. It was a bit awkward, because I was still nailed to a post in the middle of a field, and she was a free scarecrow. But she understood. She had gotten her freedom just a year or two ago. Oh my, um, she was beautiful. The finest sackcloth face you ever did see. We sent messages to each other upon the feats of pigeons. Those that weren't scared away by crows, that is. We did a fine job as scarecrows, but sometimes... <laughs> Those darn ravens, they would hide in the, the shadows and, and, and attack the other birds. 
But look at for us, we had the jack-o'-lanterns on our side. They lit up those shadows and helped us scare the crows away. I, I should keep working. I'll explain what I'm doing in a voiceover. So, painting. I'll try not to go into every little detail that I did because I did a little too much. So many layers! I do tend to go a little gung-ho with painting, and so with this pumpkin, I kind of just really leaned into putting on all the different hues, trying to make it as dynamic and textured as I possibly could. And then I looked at a better picture of a real pumpkin, and I realized that the skins are not, in fact, a rainbow of browns and oranges. So I had to cover up most of what I did. But here's a brief summary. I covered the spray paint with a besmattering of hues, mostly leaning towards yellow. Then I sealed it. Anytime I got a layer of colors that I liked, I would generally seal it so that I could put the next layer on without worrying about the first layer getting smudged or messed up. The second coat, I focused more on kind of the dynamic range of the redder hues, kind of smeared on top of the yellower hues. I dry brushed a lot of oranges and things on there. Also throughout this process, I tried to remember to color the insides a sort of tan yellow. The actual inside I didn't focus on too much, just whenever I had some spare paint left over, I took a big brush and tried to smear it around. I don't think anyone's going to be looking inside too carefully, so I'm not too concerned with making the innards look realistic. I also made sure to paint the stems somewhere along the process. The weathering is when I really kind of went overboard. I had a coat I liked, so I sealed it, and that way I could smear a dark brown into all the cracks and crevices to make it look kind of dirty a little bit. The problem is that the brown ended up too dark, and then I didn't wipe enough of it away. Which made it look more like a brown pumpkin rather than a orange pumpkin that has dirt in its nooks. After that, I kept just dry brushing and dry brushing and dry brushing more and more coats and hues onto it until it looked... Well, let me put it like this. I looked at it, and I thought... I need to cover this in a more basic color. So that's what I did. Sometimes I even smeared the paint around with a damp paper towel to kind of work it into the cracks where there was too much brown. Afterwards I sealed it, but since the sealer kind of takes a little bit of the details out, I went ahead and dry brushed another coat onto it just to even things out. Then I told myself to stop, and in order to declare it done, I put on the final touches. First I sanded down certain areas to give it those imperfections that pumpkins sometimes have. Then I very lightly splotched some coloring onto those sanded areas. Then I very lightly splotched some dirty browns onto to the bottom of the pumpkin. Then, again, very lightly splotching it, I put some rot around the opening edges. This helped make it look old and withered, and also helped to blur some of the lines between the colors that I could kind of messed up a little bit. It was hard to paint the contrast of the orange and the yellow without having some of the colors bleed into one another. So putting a little rot hid that mistake. And there you have it. It's a pumpkin. When the War of 180086 started up, the old farmer, well, he left to join the ranks, as did all the neighbors, of course. We scarecrows were left in charge of the fields. Oh, I was mighty proud watching my girl tend a whole farm of her own. But, but then the next year, the war, well, it came to us. The enemy soldiers were, were marching through the towns, lighting buildings on fire. And those fires, they spread to the farms. And from the farms, they spread to the fields. All the farmers were off fighting. All the wives were busy getting their children to safety. They were doing the right thing, bless their hearts. But, but, but in their haste, they forgot about us scarecrows. I, I was pinned to the post still. I watched the fires creep all around. 
I saw all of my fellow scarecrows burn, including my girl. Oh, by the time the fire simmered down, I had wrenched myself free of the post. I crawled and I scoured the, the, the farms near and far. But I found not one scarecrow left alive besides myself. Though I felt so alone, I went wandering the countryside. I was so close to giving up hope, but just before I did, I stumbled upon the mighty pumpkin patch. Oh, the sun shined on me that day as I met and made more pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns than I ever had before. Oh, those were the good times again. Oh, I had a family again. And before too long, you showed up, Skelly. You were a very fine friend to me. And for that, I am thankful. Oh, thank you, Skelly. Huh. You know something, Skelly? When you're wearing your glasses, you look even more like how I remembers you. Ain't that something? Okay. Hey, guys. Yes? Come out here. <laughs> Is it all done? Yes, it is. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Oh, I am just so excited. Well, well, come on, then. What are you waiting for? Well, normally, older Emmett shows up right when I'm about to... Yep, there you go. Oh, well, isn't that something? Something? What something? Did I miss something? No, you're fine. I'm just about to reveal the pumpkin. Aha! Well, I'm right on time, then. Skelly? Drum roll. Skelly! Oh. Wow. Oh. oh, let me just look at you. Oh. Well, if that don't put a smile on your face and a warmth in your heart, then... Oh my god, I don't have a heart! Quick, man, find me a wizard! A, a, a wizard? What? A wizard? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I think I know a few. Sure. Oh, joy, only with a heart can I appreciate this work of art. But that's not... Hey, hey, if you want to come along, we could be a merry band of travelers. No, I'm good. Skelly? No? Well, you're missing out. We're off to see a wizard! Okay, well that was odd. <sighs> What's that, Skelly? You think I should do an outro? Well, okay then. <laughs> see you next... I'm not thinking of anything clever. Goodbye for now, I guess. What are you doing to me? Stop this at once! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! But I need to get to the wizard! That wizard was a madman! I'm doing this for your own good! But I thought we was friends! I will never forget this! <laughs> oh, we'll see about that! Well, what are you doing back there? Stop that! Uh, uh, Let's see, memory uh, straw, memory uh, straw! Uh, Aha! Here uh, it is! Uh, I think I pulled too much. Uh oh. Oh boy. What do I do now? <laughs> Well, hello there. Hi. Say there, friend. Uh, where am I? 
um... Heck, who am I? And who are you? Who am I? Uh... I'm nobody, just forget I was here. Well, uh, that should be easy enough, considering I don't really remember anything in the first place. Yeah. What's that stuff in your hand there? Um, uh, that, that's nothing. Yeah, uh, don't worry about it. Oh, well, all right. Tell you what. I gotta go, but you, you hang tight. Because before too long, there'll be this nice little farm girl come dancing down this flax and cobblestone here. And, well, you can trust her. She's from Kansas. Oh, yeah. Bye! You know, I'm not entirely sure of what's happening here.